Welcome to the concluding part of our series on cointegration test in Stata. In our previous videos, I mentioned that you are likely to have three outcomes after performing your unit root test. The first outcome could be that the series are all stationary in levels. The second outcome could be that the series are all stationary after first difference. While the third likely outcome that we are going to do today will be when all your variables are integrated of different orders. That is, you are having a combination of both I.O. and I.1 series. If that is the case, you should still go ahead to perform a cointegration test. But in this case, you cannot use the Johansson cointegration test. You can only use the bounce test proposed by Pesaran, Sheen and Smith, 2001. So what is the null hypothesis of this test? The null hypothesis is that there is no cointegration equation, while the alternative is that the null is not true. But before you go ahead to conduct the test, you should know that performing the test must be on the level form of the variables and not on their false difference. It is also appropriate to use the log transformation of the raw variables, as I have done in this example. So when performing the bounce test, perform it on the levels of the variables and not on their false difference. The decision criteria for the bounce test is that you can reject the null hypothesis at the 10%, 5% or 1% significance level. If the F value is greater than the critical value for the upper bound, we conclude that there is cointegration. In that wise, there is a long-run relationship between or among the variables. Go ahead to reject the null hypothesis and estimate the long run model, which is the error correction model. If the F value is lower than the critical value for the lower bound, we conclude in this case that there is no cointegration, there is no long run relationship. In that wise, we cannot reject the null hypothesis and we can only estimate the short run model, which is the ARDL. But what if the F value falls between the upper bound and the lower bound. In that case, the test is considered to be inconclusive. So let us proceed to STATA to run the bounds cointegration test. STATA is already launched. I have my log files and my do files already. And um, if I type browse in the command section, it shows you what variables I have for this tutorial. I'll be using just three variables, the log of manufacturing value added, GDP growth rates and real exchange rates. We want to know if there is a long run relationship among these variables. GDP growth rate is stationary in levels, while the log of manufacturing value added and real exchange rates are stationary in false difference. So I'm having a combination of IO and I1 series. So the bounce test is the most appropriate test to employ. Opening my do file, I need to set up, uh, I need to prepare Stata to run time series analysis by issuing this command, T set year. I click on run and Stata returns with this. I have a time variable from 1981 to 2014. So I am ready to run time series analysis. The command to specify for the ARDL, before I can proceed to go ahead to do the bounce test, is what you are seeing on the screen. This is the command for the ARDL, ARDL LN MVA, which is a dependent variable. This is the real exchange rate. This is GDP growth rate. And I'm telling Stata to use the maximum lag from the AIC criterion. So having specified this, I run. And this is the output from Stata. After that, I also issue this command and the optimal lags from AIC is shown. So the optimal lag for the three variables are 1, 0, 0. 1 for the log of MVA, 0 for real exchange rate, and 0 for GDP growth rate. It is these optimal lags that I will impute into the error correction model for me to be able to perform the bounce test in Stata. So that is the procedure. So now, I have specified my error correction equation, and you can see that for the lags now, I've indicated the optimal lags as chosen by AIC. The EC here is the error correction, while the bounce test, which is the purpose of this tutorial, is what I intend to obtain. So I highlight it, and I click on the run button. So the only relevant result on this screen is the F statistics. 
Remember the decision criteria if the value of the F statistics is higher than the I1 bound. I reject the null hypothesis. But if the F value falls below the IO bound, I cannot reject the null hypothesis. And if the F value falls between the bounds, my test is considered to be inconclusive. So looking at my obtained F value vis-a-vis -vis what I have on the screen, I can clearly see that 0 0.754 falls below each of the I.O. bounds. From here, at the 10% level, the I.O. bound is 3.17. At the 5% level, is 3.79 and on and on. And 0 0.075 is clearly below the I.O. So the final outcome is that I cannot reject the null hypothesis. The log of MVA, the real exchange rates, and GDP growth rates, they have no long-run relationship. So after obtaining this result, the next thing for me to do is to estimate the short-run model, which is the ARDL. If the series are co-integrated, it implies that they exhibit a long-run relationship, meaning that they can be related and combined in a linear fashion. Meaning, if there are shocks in the short run, there will be convergence in the long run. In that wise, you can estimate both the long and short run models. You cannot estimate VAR. The appropriate estimation technique in this case will be ARDL or vector error correction on the fact that the series are co-integrated. But from what we just did, we have observed that the series are not co-integrated. They do not exhibit a long run relationship. And the only thing we can estimate will be the short run model, which is the ARDL and not the VECM. Thank you for watching. Subscribe for more videos from Crunch Econometrics and stay tuned for other parts of our lectures.